Uh, I got Cal Raleigh here with me. That's what I got, Mr. Home Run himself. Take me back to that moment last year, that home run that put you guys in the playoffs. That was incredible. What were you feeling? What were you thinking? I don't know what I was thinking at the time, obviously. <laughs> it was a lot going on and a lot of emotion, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a packed house, and um, just to do that in front of all these fans who've been waiting for you know 20 years for a playoff uh, to end the drought, and it was it was awesome. You know, when you have a moment like that, it really does kind of change your career. And I don't mean like in lure, I mean just like confidence-wise. Did it kind of change you as a player, you think? Yeah, I mean, I've never, you know, obviously last year getting sent down and um, coming up and helping the team down that stretch was, was huge, you know, not just only for me, but my, my confidence and, you know, knowing that I kind of belong. And I think that's something that a lot of people go through, you know, when they first break into the big leagues, you know, do I belong? What's my role? And, you know, for me able to break through and kind of do that was uh, – it was super, uh, super good, and it helped me out a lot. So we're talking hitting right now. Let's continue that. Um, switch hitter to switch hitter. Uh, when did you start switch hitting, and why? I've been doing it my whole life. My dad was a coach, and uh, being around the game growing up, and he always just, you know, he made me switch hit. So if I did five five swings lefty, I'd do five swings righty. If I did one drill lefty, I'd do one drill righty. So I've always been doing it. I've never known anything any other way, and that's kind of how it evolved. At what age? You don't even remember. Like five years old, little league. I've been doing it since t-ball. So, like, wow. I, like I said, I, it's just been kind of put into my in my blood, and it's kind of what I've been doing my whole life. And uh, now my little brother's doing it as well. So, see, your dad's a smart man. He looked ahead and said, "You're not platooning my kid. This is how you fight the platoon." Uh, at myself as a switch hitter, I always thought I was two different hitters. Like right-handed, I was a certain way. Left-handed, I held my hands differently. I even used different bats. What about you? Are you the same guy or you try to be different people? Uh, you know, being a catcher, you got a lot on your plate. So I've always tried to do the same things from both sides. Obviously, you know, if you nitpick and kind of get into the weeds a little bit, there are some differences in my swings. And uh, I know that. But like I said, try to do the same things from both sides. Keep it as simple as possible. But, yes, there are certain things that, you know, little drills I'll do a little differently from both sides. And uh but um, try to keep it as simple as possible. These guys like to play a little hijinks behind you. You see them drop the balls there. You know, you have fun with these guys all the time. Let's talk catching for a second, okay? Because uh, really, I, I, I want to, with today, with the new rules, the speed up rule, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, uh, how, how difficult has it been to get signs or even situational signs? Uh, you know, you gotta be on your toes. There's no, there's no waiting around. There's no that extra free time, or you know, can't just call time and you know think about a situation. It's, it's you know, get it and go. And so you gotta be confident. You gotta be prepared. I think that's the biggest thing is being prepared and uh, making sure that you're on top of your stuff and nothing's getting by. And obviously, as a catcher, you, you're always like that. So. And you got a little bit of a jump start being in the minor leagues playing with this, right? Did you play with the pitch timer in the minor leagues at all, or, or no? I had, I had about three games. Oh, that's not much. <laughs> so, so I had about three games when I got sent down last year, and it definitely was like I think I had a few violations just because I wasn't used to it. I never even, never even known about it. So, but uh, we got used to it in spring training, which was good this year. All right, so let's talk about your staff, and then I'm gonna let you go because you guys have some great arms on this pitching staff. How how different is each guy, or are they similar with different traits? With similar traits. They're all different, um, you know, but I think the one common thing is they all compete and they all, you know, give give their best stuff each time out there. But, you know, we obviously got Luis who's going tonight who's, you know, unbelievable with that sinker four-seam combo. It's 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 tough to pick up. It's coming from the same slot, and you just never know which one. It's like you got to pick one. So he's a lot of fun to catch. You know, obviously George can put the ball wherever he wants. Logan with a great fastball and, you know, just nasty stuff, um, you know. And then you got the soft throwing lefty Marco, who just kind of finds a way he gets gets out and you know competes out there and uh, gives you a chance every time you go out. Is there one pitcher, or maybe he's not? You don't have to name a guy. I'll change it this way: Have you had a situation when you've gone to the mound and he doesn't even want to see you out there? And you're like, hold the time out. I'm coming to talk to you because I got to take charge of this situation. We actually. Uh, He's not on. He's not our starter. He's Matt Brash. He. I, I went out one time and he. Uh, you know, he's nasty, obviously, with the slider. But I came out one time and I thought he was. He thought I was going to be very upset with him. He started getting all defensive right away and it's like, I, I swear I could. I was like, no, dude, I'm just out here to give you a breath and calm down. I'm not yelling at you. Like, <laughs> he was getting real defensive. So I. Uh, 
I think he thought I was coming to yell at him that one time. I love it. You got that leadership quality. Uh, last thing, talking to your dad. I know we got Bill Ripken sitting on there. Who's, he played for his dad, and dad groomed him. It's so important. When you look back, you get a chance to tell your dad right now. As him being a coach, coaching you, what, what stands out the most? What are you most thankful for? Um, you know, I'm just thankful that, you know, he made me into the man I am today, obviously on and off the field. But, you know, teach me to be tough. Teach me how to do things the right way. Play the game the right way. You know, you play hard. You play 27 outs. You, you know, you, you do things the right way. You play to win. And I think that's something that's carried through me, uh, you know, through my career. And it's always helped me going back to that. All right, man. Thank you, Cal. Appreciate it. Guys, name Cal. You know, they play for the dad. Yeah. See, I think Ripken, Bill, uh, you know, playing for your dad is a huge advantage. I'm just saying, I'm throwing it back to you like that. It is. It's a huge advantage. See you guys.